family and friends and fellow YouTubers, it's Kim here from Kim's Country Corner and I am out at the Hancock Homestead this weekend and I have my daughter Karen here. She just lives right down the road and um, the three beautiful grandchildren are here too but Pop Pop John has them in the other room. And what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be canning apple butter. I know I told you in one of the previous videos I didn't know if I would get this done but Karen has graciously offered to help me and she has also added some of her apples to my apples. Um, my apples are the Red Delicious, you guys have seen the trees, and she has a large beautiful Golden Delicious. Um, she's out to help me with a special project. We are going to be making apple butter. I know I said in one of my previous videos that I didn't know if we'd be able to can anything this year um, because of the limited apples I had and also because of limited canning supplies. Um, it's yeah. been very difficult fi finding canning supplies in the stores. However, we did happen to locate um, a case of canning jars, the jelly jars. So we're going to be <laughs> doing at least um, nine jars of apple butter. And whatever we can't get canned, uh, we will either freeze into Tupperware freezer containers or eat fresh. But we have enough apples now that we're going to start making some apple butter. And we're going to be using the recipe out of the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. This is an excellent book whether you're a new canner or an experienced canner. Excellent book. Um, has hundreds of recipes, very detailed. Um, I like it because one of the things Karen and I noticed today is, um, for example, on the sweet apple butter recipe, not only does it give you the recipe, but it also gives you variations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I know Karen and I, we were reading the recipe and we were like, oh, we forgot apple cider. Mm -hmm. And Karen was like, are we going to be able to do this without the apple cider? And I was like, well, I would think so. I would think all you would need to add is water. But So she was reading the recipe, and sure enough, it has the recipe for tradi traditional apple butter. And uh, Karen, why don't you go ahead and read them, um, the, read them the ingredients first, and okay. then tell them the variation we're going to use. Okay, so for our sweet apple butter, you'll have to have six pounds of apples peeled, cored, and quartered two cups of apple cider, we'll have three cups of sugar, and then a table, one and one half teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one and one half teaspoon of nutmeg. It also calls for ground cloves. The apple butter for the traditional style, it says that you can prepare it as, the, as above, but you can replace the apple cider with three cups of water and increase your sugar to six cups of sugar. Sorry, my voice. If you're using really sweet apples, you can start with five cups of sugar. So that's what we're going to do. And then increase it if we want to we make it more again. sweet. Since we're using um, Red Delicious and Golden Delicious, which are considered sweet apples, uh, we're decreasing the sugar to start with. But like Karen said, we can increase it if we need to. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do then is we are going to, um, I guess, peel core and slice the apples. So um, we won't make you watch all that, um, but that's what we're going to be working on for probably about the next hour is peeling, coring, and slicing, and we will bring you back whenever you get ready for the next step. Yes. All right, talk to y'all in a bit. All right, here we go. All right. You gotta get it right on the middle there. Okay, count. One, two, three. Oh, oh good out job. I'm gonna to to pick it out of there. Go ahead, pick it out of there. Pull hard. All right. Now the little ones we need to put in here. Let's start getting some of the um, yeah. Some of the apples put in there. All right, you ready for another one? Yeah. Hey, Blippi, did this. Did Blippi do this on his show? Okay, there we go. 
Oh, let's pull it out. out. Okay. All right. I'll let you do it. Pick it out. There you go. Okay, nope, nice. nope. This one. And that. this one. Yep. Got to put the good ones in here and the core in there. The core is the middle part. Where should we do it? The core at the end of the day, Emma? Uh, slice it. Slice. Well, you slice the apple. What about these? Mm. Can you think of an animal or where we should put them? Go to an out animal. An animal? Yeah, outside to an animal. You think the birds would like it? What, let's, let's, let's go give them to the bee, to the birds. Okay. All right, you ready for another one? I yeah. think for the chickens. For the chickens, yeah. My chickens would love those. Let's pull it out. Uh, you just like to help in everything, don't you, baby girl? I accidentally put the bird. It's okay. So thank you, Let's give, let's give this. Let's, let's, let's wait till the very end. Let's okay. wait till the very end. We we haven't got let's it all the way filled up. up yet. Here, here's some good ones. You want to put those in the pan? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Grandma, will get rid of this one. You put the good ones in the pan while Grandma gets rid of this. They're good slices. There you go. Um, I want to do it all by right. myself. You want? Okay. Yeah, I remember my first canning video, Mom. Emma was sitting in her little bouncy chair there. <laughs> this one was sitting in a bouncy chair when we were doing the very first video. And now she's in here helping us. Oh. Because we had just moved into our house, and so she was like brand new. Yeah. We had all these fruit trees. I'm trying to think, was were we... Were we doing apple butter in that one, or was that, um... I think it was jelly. Yeah. Oh, oh, jelly, yeah, it was, okay. the grape jelly. Of course, that year we did a lot of stuff, so it could have been any of them. Let's go now feed these chickens. Now we'd have to have chickens. Jackson, wouldn't we? Let's <laughs> yeah. go feed these two chickens. Well, we will, but look, we got to keep up with Grandpa and Mommy. And they're, like, we really pop slight. Pop-up's fast. Pop -ups fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, not keeping up. I'm watching Emma chatting. Okay, there you go. I'm going to push it straight down. Hey, what's this part of the apple called? Core. Core? Why is it the core? Because it's the middle. It is the middle. And the core is middle. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <It was deeper. laughs> Are we going to have any apples left for our apple butter if you keep eating them? <laughs> hey, look. Did you notice that? Grant, let's scoot this way. Okay, come right here. What's what's noticeable about you and Grandma? We're wearing red shirts. We're wearing the same color red shirts, aren't we? And our pants are kind of black. Yep. Her both. pants are very black. My pants are kind of black. <laughs> we're wearing sweat socks. Yep, we both have on sweat socks. Mm -hmm. So we didn't even know it, but we dressed alike, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I don't know why. I do too. Oh yeah, you too. too. <laughs> Come here. Come here with Grandma. <laughs> Aww, look at my babies. <laughs> Stay right there. Grandma's gonna move us over so we can see us better. Yeah, there I'll you still go. say that's better. I'll say. Okay. Here, scoot up side by side. There you go. All right, now look. Okay, Jeffrey, go. Two of us are in flip socks, except for my sister. Mm-hmm. We we all have have a little. Black pants, except for her. Well, that's we, right. we all we uh, we have the same color shirts. We do as apples. As and, apples, and we're and doing potatoes. apples. <laughs> we're doing apples, so we thought it'd be a good idea to wear red, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, friends. So as you saw, we all work together as a complete family, getting these apples. Uh, peeled, cored, and sliced. And we have now added, it says six pounds, and we have one pound is equal to three cups, and we needed six pounds, so we've done 18 cups. And that was four and a half of these. Okay, so we have all of the apples. We have our six pounds of apples ready to go. It took us a bucket and a half of apples to get one stock pan. So, but that turned out pretty perfect. Yeah. It's, it's completely full, but they will cook down. Yeah. Okay, so Karen, tell us what step one is. Okay, so step one says, in a large stainless steel saucepan, combine the apples 
and it says apple cider, but we're going to use the variation and do our three cups of water instead. Bring to a boil over medium high heat, reduce heat, and boil gently, stirring occasionally until the apples are soft for about 30 minutes. Okay. Am, do you want to help add the water? Here, we could pour it in this one now. You want to help add the water? I need three cups of okay. water. Okay. Well, you go over, Mom will bring you your water, and then we can pour it in here on top of our apples, okay? Okay, that's going to be a lot of water. It is going to be a lot of water, but you're going to pour it very gently, aren't you? Because yeah. I'm a big girl. You are a big girl. Look at my friends and tell my friends I'm a big girl. I'm a big girl. <laughs> oh, you're so cute, Emma. All right, so you and Mom work as a team and pour that water. All right, so we're doing three cups of water. Where the water is going? It's, where is, where do you think the water is going? The cracks. Is it going, yeah, into the cracks, you're right. <laughs> Yes, it's going into the cracks of the apples and going down to the bottom, isn't it? All right, so Mom, we're going to go ahead and transfer this over here to the stove. Hey, girl, thing. Oh, going to do two. And we're going to put this on low heat. Okay, I'm going to do another one sometime. And it says it takes about 30 minutes, so we will be in here taking turns stirring this down, and we will all be back when it's time for the next step. All right. Mommy, yeah. I'm not cutting somebody on the phone. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, Daddy. 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 Okay, friends. So we decided that since that stock pot was pretty full and it was going to take a while to cook it down at that level, we went ahead and divided it in half into two stock pots. Um, we still have our 18 cups of apples. They've just now been divided in half. So we're still going to cook them uh, for the recommended time, 30 minutes, until they get soft. But we did decide to go ahead and do two stock pans instead of just the one. All right, we'll be back. Okay, friends, well, we have let the apples cook for a half hour. They have now both been put back into one pot. They've cooked down almost halfway. They're back in one pot because the other pot's where we're going to add the other, other ingredients. So, Karen, go ahead and read step two. Okay, so step two says, working in batches, transfer the apple mixture to a food mill or food processor, fit it with a metal blade, and puree just until a uniform texture is achieved. Don't liquefy it, and it can measure to 12 cups of apple puree. Okay, so our blender does have a puree button, most do. So Karen's going to go ahead and start pureeing the apples, and then we'll go on to the next step. You can, um, just so you know, you can make applesauce the same way. It's just instead of pureeing, you only chop. So, ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I like to do is to make sure it doesn't liquefy, is halfway through, kind of stir it a little bit, and then restart your food mixer. That way, the part at the bottom doesn't liquefy. There you go. Yep. Okay, I'm going to zoom them in real quick, Karen, so that they can uh, see the puree mixture. So. Okay. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's pureed, and she's going to add that to the saucepan. And we will just continue to do that for the whole batch that we made, and then we'll bring you back for the next step. Whoops. Okay, so Karen has just pureed the last batch of apples. And this is the consistency that you're looking for. 
So we are ready to go on to the next step. All right, friends, so we have our pureed apples, and now Karen's going to read step three. Okay, so we combined our puree, our sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Stir until the sugar dissolves. Bring to a boil over medium-high heat, stirring frequently. Reduce the heat and boil gently, stirring frequently until mixture thickens and holds its shape on a spoon. Okay, so our ingredients that we need to add to the apples are... So sugar, we decided we're going to go with five cups. Yeah. All right. I guess I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, I know. That's a lot of sugar, guys. That's a lot of sugar. But that's what it calls yep, for. That's what it is. After the five cups of sugar, we're doing the cinnamon, which is one and one half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Okay, and I always like to measure over a bowl so that if I accidentally get too much, you won't mess up your recipe. So there's one and a half. Okay. And a half. All right. Okay. We need a half teaspoon of ground cloves. Oh, that was nutmeg. Okay, so half teaspoon of the ground cloves. The ground cloves has a really nice, rich brown color to it. That's what gives your apple butter its color. All right. Is that is that a good half? Yeah. yeah okay. Yes, it has and a nice scent. Feels really good in here. And then we're doing um, one, one and a half, half of the nutmeg. Nutmeg. Half. All right. All right, so we have all of the ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna stir until the sugar dissolves. Bring to a boil over medium-high heat, stirring frequently. Reduce heat and boil gently, stirring frequently until the mixture thickens and holds its shape on a spoon. And we'll show you the shape on the spoon technique when we reach that point. So we've got all of our ingredients added. We're gonna go ahead and move it to the stove top. And Karen will stir. Okay, friends, so we have it in the saucepan. We have it um, coming to a boil. This is what your texture is going to look like. We're letting it thicken up even more because the water will evaporate and it'll get a nice thickness to it. So, all right, we'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. Okay, friends, so we've had our mixture on the burner for about 30, 35 minutes. It has thickened up very nicely, and uh, so we're ready to go on to the next step. And that includes making sure that it is spoon ready. Now, what that means is I'm going to get out a little sample of my butter. I'm going to take a spoon and I'm going to dish a spoonful onto a plate, like so, alright? If the mixture is spoon ready, then it will hold the shape of the spoon and there will be no liquid seeping out from underneath, okay? So this is definitely spoon ready. I'm going to take a taste test. Do you want to test, Stevie? Mmm. Is it good? So good. <laughs> Do I have to grab myself some? Yes. We're going to take a taste test. Very good. It's so good. Yeah. It's ready to be canned. Mmm. Is that good? <laughs> that is so yummy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mmm. Alright, so step four uh, was to prepare the canner, the jars, and the lids. So we have done that, and um, Karen is going to go ahead and read what step five is. Okay, so next up we're going to ladle the hot butter into the hot jars. Uh, we're going to leave a quarter inch 
space, headspace. We're going to remove the air bubbles and adjust the headspace if we need. We'll wipe the rim clean, put on a lid, and then screw the band down until resistance is met, which is also the fingertip tight, just tight enough. Okay. Kara will be doing the canning because she is choosing to use this as part of a Christmas yeah. basket for family and friends. Yep. So um, we're going to let her go ahead and finish it off. All right. Grabbing out my hot, clean jar, pouring away from me. Okay. I'll use my funnel. Put in some apple butter. The apple butter is hot. The jar is hot, which is how it's supposed to be done. Move hot to hot. Yep. Fill that up. That might be a bit much. See? Okay. Take my tool to poke out the air bubbles. Okay. I'll use the same tool to measure the headspace. Headspace is very important. Uh, the apple butter is needing a quarter inch. Yes. Uh, but some foods, like the tomatoes, when they cook, they expand. So they need a little bit more headspace. Um, the reason headspace is important is because as they're expanding, if you don't allow enough headspace, it will push your lid off. Now, the apple butter is not going to expand the same way as other foods. So that's why it doesn't need as much headspace. Okay, go ahead, Karen. I'm wiping the rim clean. The reason that you need to do this part is because if the rim is not clean, it will not allow the lid to make a proper seal. So that's why you have to clean, clean off that rim. And she's centering the lid. Okay. And then she's going to add the ring. Go ahead and on down. Fingertip tight. All right, and we will go ahead and finish up the jars, and we'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. So you're supposed to be eating that on crackers or toast. <laughs> I think I'm just going to eat on my spoon. <laughs> All right, friends. So Karen uh, was able to do nine jars. We ran out of lids. We have enough apple butter in here for, for probably at least two more. Um, we're just going to put them in a plastic container and use them up right away. So, um, but yeah. Now, Karen, you want to go ahead and tell them what step uh, six. six, step six. Yep. So we're going to place the jars in the canner, ensuring they are completely covered with water. Bring to a boil and process for 10 minutes. Remove canner lid, wait for five minutes, then remove jars. Okay. Cool and store. All right, so go ahead and put them in with your jar uh, thing, lifter, jar lifter. So handy. Yeah. And does the water completely cover the jar? It is. It does. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 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 If you're like us, where you did not have it quite enough canning jars and lids uh, to finish up your batch. This can always be put into a Tupperware freezer container and frozen. And of course, the only bad thing about that is that in order to use it, you have to get it out and let it thaw first uh, before it's usable. But it will stay good that way. Okay, so, so the timer for 10 minutes. She set the timer for 10 minutes, all right. Yeah. Lid on, jar, uh, canner lid on. There we go. Okay, friends. So while we're waiting for this batch to uh, fully can, I asked Karen to share with you her crock pot method. Um, 
We did the recipe according to the ball recipe book, uh, where you do it on the stove top. However, Karen found a method on YouTube, right? Pinterest. Pinterest. <laughs> on Pinterest, uh, that showed a crock pot method. And so she made a batch that way at home, and she's going to share that with you. Yeah. So there's so many things you can do with apples, but I really love the idea of apple butter. So what I did was I used my crock pot. I used the same amount of apples. It basically calls for six pounds, but I just filled up my crock pot because it was about five and a half probably that my crock pot could hold. Um, I washed them, then cored them, but I left the peels on. Yeah, with her method, you don't have to peel. Yeah. Um, you slice them a little bit. Yes, I sliced to them to down. get the peel out. But yeah, the peelings are in there and they cooked down. So yep. go ahead. So I just filled up my crock pot with just apples and I didn't add anything else. And then you cover it and I put it on high and I cooked it for four hours. But at every hour mark, I opened it and gave it a good stir. And you could just tell that they were heating up and that they were about ready to be put into a blender. And... Um, so after four hours, when they were completely cooked through, I put them in the blender. I blended it all up. I You had to get your whole crock pot clear because you were going to pour the stuff from your blender back into your crock pot. Add in, it. my recipe that I saw only added cinnamon. Um, just for like health purposes, they didn't want to add any more sugar to the apples because they were already sweet enough. I thought that was really cool. You know, when we were doing our recipe and we added those five cups of sugar, we both commented about, wow, that's a lot of sugar. And Karen mentioned to me, she said, in my recipe, you don't add any sugar. So in, for any of you out there, health conscious, watching those sugar intakes, this is an excellent recipe. Yeah. Apples and cinnamon. Yep. So. Yeah, and it has the peels on it, and peels sometimes have more fiber than yeah. um, if you were to to leave them off. But she'll show you, go ahead and pour them a mixture. The peels, complete, the peeling completely cooked down. Yep. You cannot see them at all. Yep. And um, I'm going to do a taste test. Yep. I've, I've already done it. one, but I'm going to do another one. So I, in my recipe though, um, I did add a little over a tablespoon of cinnamon. Um, I know I measured that much. I also added nutmeg because I know I like nutmeg. And I added probably a tablespoon of sugar just to give it a little bit more sweetness, but you don't have to, because I tried it without sugar before I put sugar in it, and I thought it was still good. Oh, it is. It, it is, is good. very good. I liked it, it a lot. It is very good. So there's so many ways you can do the it. The two butters do have a slightly different taste, mm -hmm. however, they are both delicious in their own right. Yeah. So thank you, yeah. Karen, so much for sharing yeah. Another technique. One of the reasons that she likes the crock pot so much better than the stove top is... Yes. Well, it's so much easier to do with my kids because I have a one-year-old who wants to be packed around and I have my two older kids who, you know, Our they want my three attention. And six. Yeah, they want my attention, they want to play, and I just can't do it if I have to stand at the stove. And so this method was so easy for me, knowing that it didn't even take a whole eight-hour day. It right. was just going to be part of the day. Because it's and four hours in the crock pot. Right. right. Oh, so actually it's five. So you cook it for four, and oh, then okay. after you blend it, you put it back in for oh, another okay. hour. For another I didn't hour. mention that. Okay. For the same reason we did here, to thicken yeah. it up to get more water out of there. So. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's really good. I like the stove top. I like this version. My husband likes them both too, so yes. it's a win. <laughs> One of the reasons we were able to do the stove top today is because we had Pop Pop John as the babysitter. And uh, if we had not had him, you would not want to be doing this with a young child. You know, you have boiling water, you have hot apple butter. And by doing it in the crock pot, it's not rushed. So let's say that the four hours was up and she still wasn't ready to deal with it. Yeah. You know, she can come back in 15, right. 20 minutes and exactly. do it. You know? That's right. Yeah. Uh, she can wait until they're napping and do it. So if you're a young mom mm -hmm. and conscientious about your sugar intake, Pinterest. Yes, there's do, so many options. Do you have um, 
did did you have a particular recipe and what did you um, type in? Just yeah. apple butter, no sugar? No, I just typed in apple butter in the crock pot. Oh, apple butter and in the crock pot. And Pinterest, I don't know how many of you do that, but you can find so many recipes. And I actually went through and read through a whole lot of recipes. So I don't know if I followed a particular one, but um, the one that really stood out to me did say they only added cinnamon. Yeah. I decided to add other stuff because I know like when I do apple pies and stuff or apple crisp, I like the nutmeg. I like a little yeah. bit of sugar. And this you can can mm -hmm. just like we're doing the stove top method. Um, and if we had enough jars, we would be canning this. Yeah. But she has special freezer proof Tupperware containers, and uh, she's also going to be leaving some for mom <laughs> and dad too. So. Yep, I'm going to get past <laughs> so them. So it's going to get used. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so two different methods here. Yeah. All right, so uh, we have three minutes left on our timer, and we'll be back. Okay, guys, our timer is going off, so Karen's going to remove the lid for, for, uh, for five minutes. She'll reset the timer. Yeah, that's fine. She'll reset the timer for five minutes. And then after the five minutes, we'll come back in and take the jars out. Yes. Okay, friends, so that is the timer telling us that the five minutes is up. It's time to remove our jars from the canner. So Karen is going to use the jar lifter to lift the jars out of the hot uh, water bath canner. And what is it we're listening for, Karen? We are listening for a beautiful pop. We are listening for a beautiful popping sound. That will tell you that it has been sealed. However, you may not hear all the pops. And you can tell if they are sealed properly by looking at the little bubble on top of your lid. If the bubble is sticking up, then it still needs to be sealed. But if the bubble indents itself, then that means it has sealed. Okay. Um, if you have one that does not seal, then you have um, two options. You can either reheat your canner up and go through the last process of the canning stage uh, where you heat it for 10 minutes again. Or you can just simply use that jar right Ooh. away. Ooh, we I heard a pop. We heard a pop. We're listening for nine. And uh, if we don't hear all the pops uh, because we're busy or whatever, we can, like I said, look at the little bubbles. Yep, they're popping. So excited. Oh, me too. The recipe called for eight eight-ounce jars, uh, which are the jelly jar size. We were able to get nine plus some. Another pop. I keep talking when the pops are going off. We were able to get this much more. So, Ooh. Yeah, I know. it's exciting, isn't <laughs> so it? So exciting. So for our batch, we got nine jars. Well, actually, that was all the jars we had. So mm -hmm. nine jars and then a Tupperware container, which we will use right away. For sure. All right, friends. So we are very happy with the nine oh. jars that we got. Oh, I can't wait. And uh, I'm sure that whoever receives them as a gift are going to... Oh, another pop. Yeah. Are going to be very excited too. Yeah. So, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about what's going on in my corner of the world, which oftentimes <laughs> involves my children and my grandchildren, yes. then please come back to Kilm's Country Corner. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And we will talk to you all later. Yeah. Bye for now. Okay, and so also, um, we want to leave the rings on for a day, for at least 24 hours. And, uh, and then after the 24 hour mark, you can take the outer rings off and store them with just the lids. But uh, do leave your outer rings on for at least a day. All right.